we're going to do here is we're looking at testing with insulation. What I'm going to do is just go over some of the main points about what you need to how the testing with insulation works, how we're going to break it down and some of the important things, what you need to do first before you start doing the testing with insulation. I just want to bring some things out in the, um, of how you look in section 8 on the testing and verification. We're going to have a look at the flow diagram, how that works. The first thing I want to talk about is the first two items that you really need to test before you start looking at a whole installation is the main earth. So the main earth we're looking at from here runs from the earth bar down to the earth stake. Now on the earth stake you notice we've got a tag as well that covers under a regulation. Now the difference, this is actually on a clip. The clip when we're testing we actually have to test to the earth electrode itself not to the clip because there could be a high resistance between the clip and the main earth stake. All right, so we do that. So that runs in from here, runs back up to the main earth stake. The other one we've got is when we come down to here, we have a tap. Now the difference between these two is this is what we call a bonding conductor. Now this is bonding and making sure the earth, it could be a pool fence, it could also be a light or anything. And the only difference with these two is they, between the main earth and this one is they don't have a active and neutral running out of it. So when we look at a power point like here, you have the earth at the bottom here, that actually is called a protective earth. So this is called a bonding earth, and this is called a protective earth. So when we have a look at the active and neutral coming out, this is actually to protect the circuit if anything comes down to ground. Here, this is only made that if it becomes alive, it's at earth potential, all right? So let's come back and have a look. From the main earth bar, down to the earth stake is 5 ohm, uh, sorry, 0 0.5. And then from here down to the earth electrode is 0 0.5 as well. We don't have a high resistance on earthing systems because the idea, and it's coming back to fault loop impedance, is making sure that we have a low enough pass for the fault current to operate. Now fault loop impedance, we'll talk a little bit about this as we go through the testing, works between the uh, neutral, sorry, the act, uh, active of the circuit breaker, which goes out, it then joins back down through the earth and comes back to the earth here. So we do have a set value that we're going to be looking at. So we will come back to that and have a talk about that later. So let's come back and have a look at the whole installation. So what we're going to do is talk about the meter board. This one here is a point of attachment. We have our service view sitting in between here. So our mains will come in, go from here. Our neutral point doesn't have a service fuse in there at all. It's only the active conductor across here. All right. And then that'll come from here down through to our meter board. Our neutrals are linked through the neutral link. We then have the load line coming in, which comes from here down to the line. From the line, it then goes across to the uh, load, which is the top of the main switch. Now, the only problem we've got is we've got a break here. Now, when you look at this, this is like a, our kilowatt hour meter goes on here. We have the current flowing through our um, power or our amp meter, if you want to call it. And then we put in a little bit of voltage in, so it becomes a uh, watt meter. And that basically reads how much power we're consuming at a time, kilowatt hour, maybe they call it. The neutral doesn't have to be big because all it's doing is putting a potential voltage across these two wires to create a voltage. We have our inline current and then we have our voltage potential across here. All right, so we don't have to put a link across the neutral because the neutral's already joined down here on the bar. So what we have to do is we have to put in a link between the active here so that the, when we test the whole installation, that we're actually testing all the way back in the mains as well in the aerial. All right, if you come over to this one, this board's the same. The only difference with this is the service fuse, all right? We have on the board here, we have an underground um, cable. We would come up, our service fuse would normally sit up on here, on the board, we then would join our two wires together and we come through to the top of the main switch. So. The difference with an underground is the service fuse sits inside the board with an overhead. When we look over here, this sits up on the point of attachment. All right, so that's the only difference. We don't need to have a service fuse inside the switchboard itself. All right, so what we're going to do now is before we start, we need to get our instrument. We're going to have a look at the, um, a little bit on the fault sheet about what we need to do and where we need to go. Each, each one of them has a clipboard. We've got a test, test sheet on that. So what we'll do, we'll come over to the table here now. All right, and we're gonna have a look at what we're gonna do. So the first one we're gonna do is we do testing of the main earthing conductor. 
we then do the bonding conductor to the water pipe so that we establish that the um, main earth and the main water pipe are at earth potential, potential which means 0 0.5. If we have a high resistance, there's no use going any further because then our tests aren't going to be um, proven to be satisfactory. Then we have we then go and test the insulation resistance of the wiring. So what we're going to do is test the whole insulation and then work our way, if that fails, we'll then work our way through all the sub-circuits. Then we come to the insulation resistance of an appliance. So on the board, we'll show you in a minute, we have either a stove element or a heater element or a hot water service, but we do have some type of plug-in appliance on its own circuit. Then we look at resistance of protective earthing conductor. So what they want to do here, each appliance has been given the active conductor size. We need to measure the earth to make sure it's all okay. Compare that to A table 8.1, uh, sorry, 8.2, which is the RHP value plus the RE value. Add them together and see if it passes or fail. So we'll work through that. So the main two tests we're gonna do first is do the main earthing conduct. Before I start, I need to test my meter. And the first thing when you do a test on a meter is make sure you zero the meter. Now I'm gonna check my battery check first. Do my battery check, I short the leads together. And the idea of that is when I push the leads together, oh, sorry, before I do that, my battery is um, okay, I've done that. I now go to short my leads, sorry, to zero my meter in. When I zero my meter in, all right, I need to make sure that I've got good connection across here, which I'm getting. All right, short them across. I push my button down on three ohms and I'm getting zero. So we've got it locked in. We just need to adjust it. The idea we adjust that is so we take out the resistance of the leads. We're not allowing for that to be put into the circuit. That's when you do with the trailing lead as well. If you run a trailing lead down to a power point and you're running them, check the earth, you must zero the meter to take out the resistance of the trailing lead as well. Okay. All right. So I've checked this here, push the button in. It's reading zero. That's great. I've got it on three ohms. We don't need to zero it in on 500 volts when we push it in because what happens is it doesn't need to have any zero adjustment. All right. We're checking under 500 volts. The way the voltage works, 500 volts for single phase, 1,000 volts for um, three phase. All right. Basically, we're putting double the DC voltage in. Once we double the voltage, it's enough. And DC also will find a fault a lot quicker than AC. AC being alternating will always up and down, but DC is very direct, and that'll find a fault in the cable very quickly. All right, so I'm going to take this over to my testing board. Put this up, seven meter up. All right, so first thing we're going to do is check the main earth. So what I'm going to do is put my clamp on my earth bar. The first thing I want to do is just make sure Set it to three ohms, just make sure when I've got it pushed in the button, it's reading ohms. Now don't forget, these meters read the opposite way. We read zero from this way on the red scale when we've got 500 volts, it reads from here up to infinity. This way, it reads from zero here back the opposite way. So at the moment, it's reading three ohms plus. If I push this onto the earth bar, it's reading like a dead short. This needs to be slightly metered again. All right, so we've got zero ohms. All right. Um, these meters are probably are okay, but because they've been used by apprentices, they get knocked around a bit. When you've got your own personal meter, you tend to take a lot more care of it. You can't throw these meters around because they've got a moving iron core inside and they don't take much to damage, all right? So this is what we call a moving coil meter where it moves back. You notice at the back too, we've got a little mirror underneath the red line and that's what they call the parallel effects, which means is when you're looking at it, you can always look in the mirror there to see and get make sure because sometimes you're looking at it on an angle, you might take the reading a little bit differently. All right, so I've got my active. I'm now going to do the earth of the main earth. I'll come down to the earth state. I'll push onto the earth. And I'm getting... What am I getting? So I'm not getting nothing. So there is inbuilt faults in this. So at the moment, I'm getting more than three ohms. So what I'll do is I'll switch to the 500 volts. And we'll come down, test, and I'm getting something like 4 ohms, I think, close to 4 ohms. So that's a fail, all right? The minimum reading I should be getting, sorry, maximum reading is 0 0.5. So that's put down as a fail. 
The next one I'm going to do is the um, tap, which is my bonding conductor. Let's come back to zero. I need to come back to the 3 ohm scale. Come back here. And that's running pretty much close to 0 0.1. All right. So that's okay. That passes. So what we're going to do now is going to test the whole insulation. So what I need to do for that now is I've done the first two tests. The next one I'm going to do, now normally you'll have this MEN connection in. My MEN would be in and we're going to test the whole installation. Some of the pre-tests I've got to do is put my active conductor across here. So I might test the whole pit. So we're going from the pit up here. Rather than join the cables at the pit, you can do this at the meter board because it's a lot cleaner and easier. If you're down on the ground, you've got moisture, you've got bloody, make sure the cable... The only thing you've got to make sure is that the cables are clean and sitting out of the water, not down the ground. So I've joined the active and neutral together here. The next thing I'm going to do is take the MEN link out. Keep that out. We're testing the whole installation. I also need to make sure that all switches are turned in the on position because we need to include the switch wire going to your fan sockets and fluoro. Not necessarily worry about putting all the power points on, but I, I always make a habit of turning them on. Make sure we've got all the appliances disconnected. Sometimes you don't have hot water services or things might not be disconnected on doing a new installation. They tend to come in after once the power is put on. So the idea is just to test the wiring on the insulation only. We don't want to get trapped with hot water services or other um, appliances that could already have faults in them. So I try to eliminate them out of the circuits. I'll turn the main switch on. Make sure all switches are in the on position. You'll notice with the switchboard here now, that everything's got RCD protection. Until 2018, air conditioner stoves and other type appliances under 20 amps, had, sorry, anything under 20 amps had to be RCD protected, but basically stoves and all that stuff didn't have to have an RCD. Now, after 2018, everything above or nothing, um, everything below 35 amps, that's air conditioners, all appliances in the house pretty much have to be RCD protected. So now every circuit, we have the appliance circuit, which is for could be for a stove hot or anything, hot water, power and all that. They're all RCD protected. So we make sure they're all turned on. All right, there are CBAs too. They're, sorry, there are RCDs and circuit breaker protection. So we've got everything turned on. Make sure we're all ready to go. The next thing I'll do is I'll test to make sure. Now, I need to go from 3 ohms up to 500 volts. I don't need to zero the meter because it'll come back. It's reading under the... Um, um, three ohms and all that stuff we do, we need to zero it to take the resistance of the lead. The resistance of the lead here doesn't matter. What we're looking for is making sure we don't have a short to earth. So me touching this means it goes back to zero. That would be the reading I would get if we had a dead short. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to read between the top of the main switch. We do have the neutral joined as well. MBN's disconnected. All switches are in the on position. I touch this. I now have 0 0.5. All right, half a, half a meg. Minimum one mega ohm is my resist minimum reading. Now, the problem is this has failed as a whole installation. Once that's done, then we start breaking things down. I could be identifying between the neutral. So one option is I could disconnect the neutral. Right, come down, check between the neutral. It's still reading, so it's now just on one mega ohm, above one mega ohm. If I come to the active, it's now reading down low. So. By doing that, I've identified that the active conductor has a fault on it, and then I need to work my way through. All right, so I've eliminated it. It's now got the active conductor has got a low reading. What I can do now is I can start working, if I start turning off breakers, so this is another kind of way which is probably a little bit out of whack, but what I'm trying to do is prove which circuit has it. So at the moment, that hasn't made any difference. That hasn't made any difference. The lighting circuit has. So it looks like the lighting circuit could be the problem. So when I when I introduce that, it goes below down 5 ohms. If I actually introduce the other two, it doesn't seem to be any different. So these two circuits, the power circuit, seem to be clear. The lighting circuit seems to be the problem on there. So now if I break it down to the active, all right, I can turn my main switch off. All right, turn off the stove circuit, bring it back here. And we seem to have both circuits. And we come down to the fault. So we've got a load side and coming out. So I'll turn that off. It's on. Turn them off. We have the seam on above one mega. 
So the fault is actually on the active conductor. So we've broken it down that the active conductor on the lighting circuit seems to be the problem. All right, what I can also do is go through and just check all my other circuits to make sure that nothing's low. So that one's down low, this one's high, got a little bit of a fault right on one mega ohm, and all these ones here are sitting above, well above one mega ohm. So I've identified that my lighting active here is my problem and broken it down to that circuit. And then what I'll do now is I'll start going out and checking light fittings and all sorts of stuff. So we've done the whole installation, we've done the four tests on all the sub circuits. We know which ones pass and fail. So we'll go from there, we're going to do the RPH earth test in a sec. So what I need to do for that is they actually want me to test from the earth bar to the lighting point, to the ceiling rays, to each power point, what the resistance is. So if I'm going from my main earth bar, the next test, we'll go to the earth bar here. Now I need to tune that back, sorry, to three ohms. They just want me to get the active conductor. So we come in here to the earth test and it's only back to zero. So we don't have much resistance on that at all. The problem is because it's such a short wire as well. Then I'll come back and we'll do our lighting a fan, fan socket outlet and that'll come down. So that's come down to nearly 0 0.5, 0 0.4. Do the ceiling rows, will be the next one. And we pick up, making sure we pick up the correct earth on this, which is this one here. All right, we're down to nearly down to zero. So the thing about this is also showing I've got continuity of earth as well. There's no open circuit, we don't have a high resistance. All right, and then we'll come down to our power points. We do down here, on the bottom here. Some of them will read and some won't. That one's not. Uh, that one will read on circuit number one. And we're getting readings. We're not getting anything on this one. We do on this one. So the socket out number three has no earth. There's a problem with the earth on this one. And appliance, we have that too. All my earths are all okay, working really well. And we know that the content of the earth and the RPH level. So what we'll do now, we'll come back and we'll finish it there and we'll come back and we'll have a look at how we read it on the diagram.